Hi, in this talk, Automating Snowflakes, I will walk through how we leveraged Terraform's declarative language and provider extensibility within our CICD pipeline to create Snowflake and AWS resources that continuously ingest data from S3. My name is Bruce, and I'm the squad lead for reliability and quality at VGW for a product called Global Poker. I'm fortunate enough to work with some amazing teams and help improve our product stability and reliability using Ollie automation and incident response. I'm also a 2020 and 2021 Hashcore ambassador. Okay, let's do a bit of backstory. Why do we want to automate snowflakes? What is a snowflake? And what problems were we trying to solve? Last year, we kicked up a project to get better internal visibility of our data to help us and the business make better decisions. The business already had existing data flowing into Redshift where it would be aggregated, transformed, and visualized in using other tools. This was useful. However, the operational team did not have easy access to Redshift um, and could often be delayed by 24 hours. We wanted real-time visibility, all close to it, of some of our data in fast and a cost-effective way without the need to rely on other teams to provide it for us. So we selected the use of Snowflake to house, transform, and query our data. If you're not familiar with Snowflake, it's a cloud compute-based data warehousing company, and they provide a fully managed storage with scalable on-demand compute instances for super fast query of your data. Snowflake would enable our teams to get answers almost instantaneously for our data. We had the technology, so now we needed to build it. To get our data into Snowflake, we would use process managers that would read data from our database and would use Kinesis Firehose to land that data into S3. From the S3 bucket, we would use Snowflake integrations and Snowpipe, Snowpipe to pull the data into Snowflake databases. Then we could use the Snowflake's lightning quick uh, transformations and queries with their compute resources. For the sake of the talk, I'm gonna focus on the landing zone, which is the S3 bucket and the Snowflake integrations. As you can see, this architecture requires infrastructure to be provisioned in both AWS and Snowflake. To set this up, we needed to configure access permissions, for the S3 bucket, we needed to create IAM roles in AWS, create a cloud storage integration in Snowflake, and then go and retrieve the AWS IAM user from Snowflake account, and then grant that IAM user permissions to the access bucket in AWS, and then finally create the external stage. As you can see, there's a lot of steps, which involves going in and out of AWS and Snowflake consoles to create a single integration. Who wants to do that? Hopefully no one. We had several options to choose from uh, when provisioning our infrastructure requiring, required for the solution. Option one, we could manually click ops the creation of the resources in AWS and Snowflake. No thanks, it's not very repeatable. It's error prone and requires elevated, elevated permissions to do so. Another option, option two, we could automate the AWS components into Ter in Terraform and output that information required for Snowflake to consume, and also create a SQL script or flyaway script that would run to provision the Snowflake components. But we still have the dance between Terraform and Snowflake, and we still have, uh, have, still have to update the scripts on the fly to get the final results. Doesn't sound very declarative, does it? A final option, option three, we could use Terraform to provision all the resources using Snowflake and the AWS provider. This way we could pass outputs from an AWS, res AWS resource to Snowflake resources and declaratively provision our required infrastructure. Better yet, we could write reusable modules that could be used again and again as we landed more data into S3 buckets. I think that's the winner. With the extensibility of Terraform, we were able to use multiple Terraform provider plugins to manage different types of provider resources in the same Terraform config. 
For our purposes, we use both the AWS provider, which most people are familiar with, and the Snowflake provider created by Chan Zuckberg. Hopefully I'm saying that right. To use more than one provider in Terraform code, it's easy as adding this, the Terraform code or Terraform configuration, as you can see here. So you've got the Snowflake and AWS resources, the source and the versions. Now we have our provider added, we need to configure our, our access to the different providers by passing the required credentials. The safest way to do this is pass them in as environment variables. We do this by setting our environment variables in Terraform Cloud, that, then that uh, gets exposed to the, to the shell environment as it's being run in Terraform Cloud. Plus it's encrypted. What's next? Well, first, we need an S3 bucket. This will catch all the events from our process manager. So we add an S3 resource to our config and also needs to make sure that we block public access. Access to the bucket will be tightly controlled by an IAM role, which the process manager and, the Snow and Snowflake will have access to. Then we create a Snowflake database with schemas, grants, using resources from our Snowflake provider. Now this is a very simplified grant structure. As you can see, um, you'll probably need to add more, obviously more grants to it, um, like usage, update, and select table on views. Um, please don't take this as the gospel for this one. Then we create an S3 integration for our Snowflake um, to be able to connect and pull that data. In this case, we write a reusable module that creates an IAM role that has access to the S3 bucket and adds the Snowflake ARN and external ID, creates a Snowflake storage integration that references the AWS role ARN, creates a Snowflake S3 storage stage, sorry, that connects to an S3 bucket, and grants, sorry, or creates a S3 bucket notification to poke Snowflake um, via SQS and creates a Snowflake pipe that is notified by the SQS um, for any changes that happen in the bucket and copies that data into the target database. This does sound a lot, but by using a module, uh, we can use this co code again and again, and also reduces uh, the lines of code you have to write again and again as well. Okay, demo time. Okay, we're gonna jump straight into the demo. So here in our main.tf, um, in our Terraform block, we're actually telling Terraform which providers we want to use. So the source and versions, which version of that Terraform provider we want. We want Snowflake and the AWS provider. We also have our remote backend set up. So this is the Terraform cloud account I have and my organization and the workspace that it's going to be connected to. Underneath that, we've got our actual provider configuration. So here we've got the region set in both the AWS and Snowflake providers. Um, all of the secret cr uh, credentials are stored as environment variables in my Terraform Cloud account, so way safer and encrypted. So we're going to kick off with a database first off, the Snowflake Hello World database. Now I'm using a module here because it's far easier for me because if we go jump into our modules and my main for my databases, there's quite a bit that needs to be created. So we've got the database, but as well as the grants, uh, for the uh, database and table and schemas as well. So I'm using a module for that. Then we're gonna create a table. So this is where we're gonna land our data um, connected to our database and schema created from this module here. And we've got our columns here, which is gonna house our data once we've landed it. Then underneath there, we have our S3 integration module. So it looks quite chunky, um, but it, all we're doing there is just creating the IAM roles, the telling it uh, which S3 bucket to use, the storage path, the database and schema, and the copy statement. If we jump into our modules under S3 integration, we can actually see what it's actually creating here. So we, <clears throat> we've got an IAM policy that it's creating that's gonna allow us to, or that role to create, um, so connect to that S3 bucket. Um, and we've got some roles here that's connecting to 
the Snowflake storage integration and the user from that and the external ID provided by Snowflake. We've got our integration here that we're creating, so Snowflake storage integration and our, our grants. We also have our Snowpipe as well. So that's going to be looking for our changes within our S3 bucket and then pulling that across. We have our staging, which is um, what's connecting to our S3 bucket from Snowflake. Um, and then that's it. So what we're gonna do now, uh, let's kick that off and, and create these resources. So we're going to Terraform Apply. And I'm using uh, Terraform uh, 0 0.15 uh, at the moment. Um, thought I'd give it a go since it's, it's nearly out. So far, so good. So what this is doing now is creating or connecting to my work, uh, Terraform workspace in Terraform Cloud. Um, it's kicking off a Terraform run or an apply run. As you can see here, it's telling me what is going to create it's quite a lot, 21, 22 resources. Okay, we're all good. Yeah, here we go, 21 resources. Um, I'm gonna just manually type in yes, um, if we're doing it as part of a CI CD pipeline, um, this would done, be done by an API. So entering yes, and that's gonna confirm that on Terraform Cloud and that workspace and kick off the apply. Oof, there we go. Creating databases, grants, roles, all the stages it needs to connect to S3 and Snowflake. And we're done. Okay, what we'll do next is jump into our worksheet in Snowflake. Here we are in our console for Snowflake. Um, I've signed up for a free account. It's super easy to do that so you can have a play. Uh, if we refresh our database objects here, we should see Hello World come up, which it does, fantastic. And we can click on that. And here are curated public and raw schemas that we also created. And hopefully alongside our Hello World table, fantastic. Now, there should be nothing in there, obviously, because we haven't uh, moved any data in there yet. So we'll click and do a select, an empty table, fantastic. And we can also see our list, uh, our, actually our staging, so we can see if it's connected to our S3 bucket. Awesome, there are no files in our S3 bucket. So let's jump into S3 where our data is gonna be landed. So this is our bucket, our Hashtalks Dev Snowflake demo bucket in uh, US East 1, we'll click in there. And here's our staging path. So where all of our files will be dropped into. Now let's upload some files in there and just see whether they come across into Snowflake. So we're gonna upload and we're gonna grab our example files. We'll grab those and just chuck those into S3. Now we're not going to enable bucket versioning because, because these won't last very long. This is just for the, the demo. So we'll click upload and they're going to, awesome, succeeded upload. Now I'll quickly want to show you just the, the properties of that bucket here. So Terraform did create a event notification. So this one here, which is going to notify the SQS queue in uh, Snowflake when everything, anything goes, gets put into this path here. Okay, let's jump back into our console here. So we can actually have a look to see um, if those buckets, uh, sorry, if the bucket has been connected, see whether Snowflake can see those files. We'll do another list on that stage and we should see those three files here. There we go. This is, these are our files. So this tells us that we are connected to our S3 bucket. Then if we're lucky, we would, and the Democrats are playing nice today, we'll do a select start from that table and we should see data come into those tables. Not just yet. Oh, there we go. A couple of refreshes, and here we go. So we've got the, the city state, postcode, sales date, and the price all updated from the data from those files. Awesome. Okay, let's move on. So you can see that from our demo, 
our integration is up and running. We have our Terraform code that declaratively describes what we want our infrastructure to look like, but now we want some controls in place to only allow approved changes to be applied to the AWS and Snowflake environments. We use GitHub for version control and use GitHub Actions as our CI/CD pipeline. This allows us to kick off plan workflows via a Terraform Cloud API on every pull request that will validate it and verify what changes will be made. We can also run GitHub Actions on Merge to master to automatically apply these changes to our CI environment or continuous integration environment. And when we, release, when we create a release candidate, we also kick off a GitHub action to line up and apply in our test and production environment that can be reviewed and approved for deployment. So the pipeline begins to look something like this. The desired state of our Snowflake and AWS infrastructure is described by Terraform in our GitHub repo. Any changes or actions are approved via a pull request. GitHub Actions connected to our Terraform Cloud workspace kicks off a plan and Sentinel policy checks. Tests, test and production applies are stage gated so that we manually check and approve uh, those before releasing. And once approved, Terraform Cloud runs the apply and creates the infrastructure. So with our pipeline now in place, we now have frictionless repeatable workflows to provision the entire infrastructure required for our data landing zone that will continuously ingest the data into Snowflake. It's easy as adding a new module block to our code and submitting a pull request. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Uh, my name has, as always, been Bruce Dominguez. Um, you can catch me on an email on brucedominguez at vgw.co um, or you can check me out on LinkedIn. This talk has been about automating snowflakes. I hope you enjoyed it.